So today I'll be talking about AOPS, or the Art of Problem Solving, Introduction to Algebra. I'm hoping to do a series containing of chapter 1 to 22, but I'll be starting at chapter 5 today. The, pro the book talks about all of algebra, starting from basic pandas to graphing, all the way up to radicals and sequences and series. So hello, today we'll be talking about the Art of Problem Solving, Introduction to Algebra. In total, there will be 22 chapters, but today I'll be talking about the fifth chapter. So, the fifth chapter all of, overall is about multivariable linear equations. Well, mostly it focuses on something called two variable linear equations, such as here. And depicted as this, they will be talking about introduction, substitution, elimination. So, first we go to introduction. 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 Well, there's a few important things, such as the answer. The answer is written as an ordered pair, as in x, y. Another is a group or a system of equations. A system of equations can be depicted in 5.1.4, which is right here. And the ways to solve it would be substitution, which is when solving for one equation in terms of other. Hello, today we'll be talking about the chapter 5 from the Art of Problem Solving, abbreviated AOPS. There is a total of 22 chapters, but we're talking about chapter 5. Moving on to lesson 1. Lesson 1 is an introduction. Name is the multivariable linear equations. Introduction to linear equations. So, the key point in this chapter is two variable linear equations, system of equations, and an ordered, an ordered pair. On to the first vocab, two, line, two variable linear equations. It is often wrote as, or something more complicated, but with two variables and a constant, to a system of equations. A system of equations is often wrote with a bracket as which you can solve for an answer which is called an ordered pair. An ordered pair when you put two um, two variables together when they equal a constant. Like for this system of equations, pretend the answer is This would be called an ordered pair. You would first put the question or the numbers you're trying to find in a bracket, which equals to your answer. This could be also used on graphs. Which takes us to lesson two and lesson three. Lesson two and three are ways you solve for a system of equations. So how does a system of equation equal substitution or elimination? First, we move on to substitution. So what's so unique, unique about substitution? One way to use substitution is substituting one variable in term of another. This could be used from here. You can see clearly that y equals x plus 5. So you can plug that into the first equation to get something of one variable or something that you can solve for to plug back into the equation, such as, see here that I'm plugging in the y as x plus 5. That is how you use substitution. Well, oftentimes you cannot simply just plug that in. So this is what you're going to do. One is you could use the least common denominator. What that does is that either cancels out or makes something more simpler for you to be plugged in. Well, how do we do this? This is more often used in fractions, such as this, or decimals, such as this. When people don't like to use them, such as me, 
I would multiply the equation by something to cancel out the two. Like I, like we say that for this one, one half x put into an equation is one half x plus zero point five y equals seven. Well, I don't either like this or this, so I'm gonna multiply the least common denominator first, turning them into something that I know, such as fractions. Then I'll multiply both sides by the least, least common denominator, which in this case is 2. Be sure to balance it out, which equals something simpler than this. The most important thing in substitution is staying organized. Staying organized is something important in all the way of chapter 5, as things get complicated and more complicated. Well, how do you stay organized? In this chapter, they state clearly putting variables on one side and constant on the other. Well, what does that mean? Well, look at my equations over here. You can see that all the x and y on one side. The y's and x are on one side, if it's not for substitution, as this is a special case. So, that's, that being said, if you have an equation such as you have x and y's on both sides, but neither are made for substitution. So, you either can do this and divide the x to get something you could plug in for y. Or, in my suggestion, I would move the x and y on one side to get a much more cleaner equation such as this, which is much more better to work than this. The last lesson enabled to solve in system of equations is elimination. So what is elimination? Elimination is when you have to eliminate as mentioned in the word, a variable to form a new equation often used with an x or an y, or just one variable instead of two. In this case, nothing's ever going to be perfect enough for you to just go, oh, I'm just going to, you know, minus the x. Most of the times, you'll have to multiply one or more constant, which is known commonly as a number, in order to eliminate. That will be shown later in sample problems. So what are the different ways of elimination, and what are the outcomes? About the outcomes, there are three. No solution, one solution, and many solutions. No solution is when the equation combined is never true, such as the equation This can never be true because let's suggest x as 0. Well, 1 is never equals to 0, as you may have learned before. So that makes x have no solutions, because the system is untrue. What's one solution? One solution, and you find a unique value that satisfies the variables of both equations. Like... Find a unique case of x equal y. This is the most common way for one solutions to work. And what is many solution? Many solution is when the values can be canceled out. Okay, so how can the values be canceled out? Let's put this to the test. Pretend it was... Well, forever, if you cancel out the x, 3 is going to be equal 3. So well, no matter what value you plug in, the answers are going to be the same. That will equal into many solutions or infinite solutions. Now moving on to the example problems. Now we're moving on to example problems. Example problems are when we depict what we have learned into problems. The first one we'll be talking about is 5.2.1a. In order to first solve a problem, 
you will need to write down the problem, which I copied here. And to solve the system of equations, first, you're going to label the system of equations 1 and 2. That will make it easier to write down the steps you're doing as directions. As first we can see, we need to substitute. We can see an only y here, which makes it easy to turn it y equal something of x. So, 1 would equal y, 2x plus y equal 10. y equals 10 minus 2x. That makes us a new equation, which we will label 3. Looking at 2 and 3, we can both see they contain y and x. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to first copy down the equation of 2. Then substituting in the y equation of 3. This will get out this equation, which has only one variable, but makes it easier to solve for x. Solving for x first contains distribution, distributing the y 4 into the parentheses, which gets us to 11x equals 77, concluding with 77 divided by 11, which equals 7. Plugging this into the equation of 3, we can get y as 10 minus 2x, which is 14, y equals negative 4. This gets out our ordered pair, which is xy equals 7 and negative 4. Next to on, moving on to our next example problem. Our next example problem is 5.2.2. Suppose that x is 2 minus t and y is 4t minus 7. C. Find y in terms of x. Our first step would be to copy down the problem. The problem was that x was 2 minus t and y is 4t plus 7. Now give us a system of equations. For problem c, they ask us to find y in terms of x. So here we would depict y as invariable and x as a constant. So you want y equal something instead of y plus x equal something. To, in order to do that, we will first need to solve t x for t. Well, what does that mean? That means t has to equal something enabled for t to go down to 4t. Well, how do we do that? x equals 2 minus t. Here we only have 1t, which makes it simple for us to move it to this side. This would equal t equals 2 minus x. With this, we have t, equation 3. Plugging equation 3 equal equation 2 will get us y equals 4t plus 7. y equals 4, 2 common x plus 7. y equals 8 minus 4x plus 7 using the distributive property. Upon simplifying, you would realize this would be the answer. And that is how you solve this question. And on to my next example problem. The next example problem is in lesson 3, about elimination. This one is also a basic problem to solve. 5.3.1a, 2x minus 7 equals 14, 2x plus 7 equals 6. 
this will be a system of equations. However, it is different from the one you just did. 5.2.1 was using something called substitution. 5.3.1, however, would be using something called elimination. First step, again, is to copy down the problem. Then, upon realizing something is very similar, here we both have 7y. So, in order to do that, first label the equation, then write down directions. What do you want to do? There's a plus, and there's a minus. When minus 1 and plus 1, they both would equal 0, which is cancelled. So that's what we're going to do. 1 plus 2. Which you would write down in any normal two-digit subtraction or two-digit addition. Three x plus five x. Three x plus two x is five x. Cancel out seven x plus negative seven x, which is zero. Equals fourteen plus six, which is twenty. Five x equals twenty. X equals four. That is one out of two done. Now using this to substitute into the easier equation, which would, in my opinion, be this one. Because the constant, as shown here, is smaller than the other one. 2 is smaller than 3. So 2x plus 7y equals 6. 7y will equal 6 minus 2x. 7y equals 6 minus 8. y equals negative 2 over 7. That is your second equation, which gives you out the answer xy equals 4 negative 2 over 7. And that is how you solve 5.3.1a. Now we should be moving on to challenge problems. I have chosen 532. The first one of challenge problems. I am thinking of a two-digit number. If the digits of my number are reserved, the new number is 36 greater than my original number. If the tens digit of my original number is doubled and the units is halved, the new number is 17 greater than my original number. What is my original number? First, we find out the question. What is my original number? We will make original number a, the tens digit a, unit digits b. And to make it a two digits number, it has to be 10a plus b. So that would be your original number. Then we break it down. First, we look at the first sentence. I am thinking of a two-digit number. We already have that covered. This is the two-digit number I is thinking of. If the digits of my number are reversed. So we reverse this, essentially the opposite of what we have here, which is 10b plus a, whereas the digits are flipped or reversed. Then the second part says the new number is 36 greater than my original number. The new number, well this is what we got as the new number. It is 36 greater than my original number which means if the original number which is highlighted in pink plus 36 will equal my highlighted in orange new number. And now I'll have our first equation for our system of equations. My second step will be including the second sentence. 
if the tens digit of my original number is doubled. The tens digit of my original number is doubled. The tens digit is right here. But however, you do not want to only write A as included in tens digit. So you will do 10A doubled, which means times 2. And that would be that highlighted in teal sentence. Then the units digit is halved. The units digit is essentially the B, or as here. To half that, we would do B divided by 2. The next sentence, the new number is 17 greater than my original number, which is highlighted in purple. Well, this we know as the one before is our new number which means, as before, similar, the original number plus the new, the greater unit is equal. So we now have our system of equations. And we would solve it for a and b. So first steps first, again, we would label out the directions. Then we start to solve. First, looking at the equations, they might be a little big, to say the least, so we will start to simplify. The first equation, we have 10b plus a equals 10a plus b plus 36. Moving b over here is 10b minus b, which is 9b. Moving 10a over there, we will have minus 9a, which equals 36. The second one, we have 20a plus b divided by 2 equals 10a plus b plus 17. Moving b over here, we have negative. So 20a minus 20a minus negative b divided by 2 minus 10a equals 17. However, looking at both equations, they could be simplified for one more step. So we simplify again, getting us with distributive property taking out the 9 and taking them both over here, which means 36 is divided by 9, which is b minus a equals 4. The second one may look a little trickier. First of all, I don't like fractions, but we're not going to focus on that. First, we're going to focus on the obvious of 10a and 20a, which is shown in teal. Those are two very obvious, easily combined. So there we have 10a. Then it's minus b divided by 2. So 10a minus b divided by 2 equals 17. But I don't like the 2, as I said before. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, which gets me 20a minus b equals 34. Now I have something quite significantly s similar to before, but just simpler. So we would start from there. First, I see something very obvious. You could plug in a quite easily by changing this one to a substitution property, which gets me b minus a equals 4. b equals 4 plus a. Taking my third equation up against my second, which is here, taken all the way down from the harder version of it, and we shall continue. 20a minus b equals 34. 20a minus 4 plus a equals 34, which equals 20a minus 4 minus a. By using distributive property and taking the negative sign to both, equals 34. 19a equals 38. a equals 38 divided by 19, which is 19 plus 19 
So a equals two. Then you could simplify it back into the equation, but that would be too hard. So this is what we do instead. We take our newly made equation down here, bring it up here, and plug in the a. B equals four plus a. B equals four plus two, which is six. Writing our ordered pair, we would get a b equal two comma six. And that is how you do question. 5.32, and that summarizes our chapter 5, Multivariable Linear Equations. Now we have finished the example problems. We shall be moving on in lessons. 5.4, Word Problems. Here, the essential concept is converting words into numbers, which is the definition of word problems. So, there's a few concepts in trying to depict words. One is make sure you answer the question asked. Well, how do we understand that on a deeper meaning? Well, that's just being said, like they asked you for what's the team? Who won by how many points? But you found out how many points one team, team A, won by. But they asked for team B. That is going off topic. It is something you want to stay away from and always make sure you have your eye on the ball. Choosing variables wisely and making equations nice are part of a side note that you have to learn. Choosing variables wisely can be you have bananas and apples. You have to solve for how many bananas there are and how many apples there are. It would be nice to have them as x and y. But if you have essentially bananas, apples, oranges, and watermelon, you wouldn't remember x, y, z, and a very clearly. So in this occasion, you wouldn't use x, you wouldn't use y, you would instead use b and a. Those are associated with the first letters, the four more easy to remember. Making equations nice. This could be mentioned throughout the last two lessons, which were elimination and substitution. Well, y is nice, nice. Well, that can be said as x plus 2y plus 3x equals 7 plus 2, 2x. Well, that isn't a very equation you want to solve with, but on the good side, you could simplify it. How? x minus 2x plus 3x plus 2y equals 7. This is already much more nicer than this. We shall keep going. 4x minus 2x is 2x plus 2y equals 7. x plus y equals 7 over 2. This is essentially much more shorter than our original location, which was this. You can compare and see the numbers is much more smaller also in length. The next lesson we will learn is in disguise, which the actual term is linear equations in disguise. Well, what is this? This is this lesson essentially teaches you to use experimentation and exploration. That means don't be afraid. If you don't know what happens next, you should try it. But that does not mean that you should blindly try. It's like more of an educated guess. You know the possibilities and you want to try something. Often in here, there's more than one way. As before, in substitution and elimination, they wanted you to use that one thing. But now there could be two or three ways to do it. Such as this one. There is two ways to do this, essentially. You could see y on both ends, so here you could do elimination. But, on the other hand, this equation is y equals 2x, or you could substitute. That already has two ways of doing. 
And this guise is often when you don't know the answer, such as this. These are two equations, but they don't quite look like equations yet. But you can always try for something if you know more than one. So just here, it is an equation essentially, but this tiny part over here is similar to here. Well then, you could just essentially not knowing A and B substitute 7 into here, making you be able to solve for B. That is the whole entire, let's just say, concept of in disguise. 5.6 more. This lesson is talking about more variables, essentially focusing on three variables, not four. Well, in here, they often seem daunting, written as x, y, z, or a, b, c. These are the most commonly used triple of variables used, such as a, b, and x, y. So first step you want to do is convert to something you know. You could use elimination, and same goes for substitution. They cannot be only used to find out answers, such as here. They could be also used to reduce the number, they reduce the number of letters. Here, there is one important equation that you have to know about. It is this one. In here, this equation has some things that are necessary to say for learning. One is that in the conditions of two linear equations are equal for all values of x. The constants must equal and the coefficients of the linear terms must be equal. In other words, if a, b, c, d constants are constants and x here is like this, then we must have a equals c and b equals d. Why is this? So, as it mentions, both sides, which mean the yellow and the pink, are equal. So, in order to make that equal, we know x stays the same. And other than that, the d must stay the same, and the c and a must stay the same, which gets us this. And that is one important logical sense to be known. Now we shall move on to example problems. Now we shall continue on to word problems. Word problem, example problem. I have chose one of 5.4.2. My parents started a small farm after they retired. On their farm, they have chickens, pigs, and in total, there's 40 animal legs among the chickens and the pigs, and there's 16 animal heads. How many chickens do my parent have? Well, first is we have to convert it into words. What? Do we have to convert it into? Well, first, we put it into small bits. Bit 1. On their farm, they have chickens and pigs. Those are the variables, as the question depicts chickens. So, we will set chickens as C and pigs as p. Remember, all variables before substitution, such as, has to be lowercase. Okay, on to the next sentence. In total, there is 40 animal legs among the chickens and pigs, and there is 16 animal heads. Well, what does this mean? 40 animal legs equals, well, how many legs does a chicken have? A chicken obviously has two legs, which makes this part equals 2c. Next part, it says, 
among the chickens and and means plus. Fixed. How many legs does a pig have? Same as a dog. 4p. And that's our first equation. Well, you can't solve 2 from one equation. So it's going to be a system of equations. Well, what's the second one? There are 16 animal heads. Well, a chicken has one head and a pig has one. So there are 16 equals C plus P. And there you go. That's your system of equations and ready for solving. First step would be to simplify the first equation. As you're probably urging to tell me, there's a 2 here, there's a 2 here. You could take them both out and divide by that side. So our first system of equations become 20 equals C plus 2P. 16 equals C plus P. Upon continuing, first we label for directions. And then you will notice that C are essentially the same. Well, to cancel a plus C and a plus C, one of them has to be minus. So 1 minus 2 are our directions. C plus 2P equals 20, and C plus P equals 16. Then, since 0 is nothing, we have P equal 4. P equal 4. How do we continue on that? Plugging in into equation 2. P equals 16 minus C. But that is not what we're looking for. That is in bogus solution, which is wrong. We are looking for C. C would be so our ordered pair would be But that is not our answer, unfortunately. And why is that, you might be wondering. Well, one, we must go back to the problem. Going back to the problem, you would realize they asked specifically for chicken. Well, specifically for chicken, we have found that chicken equals 12. So you all you have to do is that. You don't need to know P unless it's necessary to solve, of course. And that is how you do problem 5.2. Moving on. We have more linear equations in disguise, of course. I will be solving the start question of 5.5.3. Find R and S if square root 3 times of R and 9 square root is 21 and 10 3 times square root R square root minus square root s is 28. First things first, you always, and I repeat, always have to copy down the equation, even if it is extra long and doofy, like this one, unless it's a word problem, of course. Upon copying 5.5.3, you would realize it doesn't really look like something people could solve. But everything is solvable as long as it's a system of equations. Okie doke. Now we start to solve. First steps first. This R and this S doesn't really look like something you would use. So what would you do instead? Well, this is where the substitution comes in. You don't really have to know the answer for substitution. We could use this and change it to uppercase, as I said before. And same thing with S. We shall change that to uppercase too. 
both set. A and B is easier. We'll just plug them in in the meantime. Gives us a new system of equations which are much more, let's say, less painful for the eye. There you go. Your new and nicely made equations are ready for working. Well, what would you do right now? Well, there's two ways. One is substitution, as you have a b here, and the other is elimination for a. Well, I'm not in the mood for a lot of calculation, so my obvious choice would be to use substitution. First, you have to change number 2. So, 2, 3 dots means so. We will do 10a minus b equals 28. Minus b equals 28 minus 10a. b equals 10a minus 28. Okie doke. So you gotta have something you could plug in. So let's do the plugging. First, take that into number 1. a plus 9b equals 21. a plus 9, 10a minus 28. 21. Viola. First, put everything on one side, variables of course, and everything else on the other. Then we start to solve. There you go. Your A is now solved as 3. In order for us to find out the answer, as A is not the answer, we could see here that A equals somewhat of an R. So, moving that down, we shall see But, as you may guess, it's a bogus solution again. So why exactly is this answer a bogus solution? Well, first, you do not simply plug in the 3 as shown below here, but instead, we know a equals 3, which we plug into the equation of here. When plugging into this equation, of instead of simply plugging into r, we would do and then cubing both will give us an answer of 27. So r would equal 27. And then taking that equation up with the simplified 2 equation, we would have our answer. But we do not plug in r as shown in here. Even if it is the final solution, we would use originally a because a is shown in here so we have b equals 30 minus 28 b equals 2 now to we take it up again with our substitution value which is so squared s equals 2 square no um Doing this, we will get 4, so s equals 4. Our final answer would be r s equals 27, 4. And that is how you do 5.5.3. And now we're moving on to review problems. I have chosen 522b. Use elimination to solve the two systems of equation below. First step, we would copy down the problem, which is 
3x plus 8y equals negative 7. 6x plus 16y equals 4. First, labeling for directions. Second, we start to solve. Elimination is a process of eliminating, essentially, so we look for something to eliminate. Down here we have 3 and 6. 3 times 2 is 6, so we could try on that. So we will get 1 times 2 minus 2. 6x plus 16y equals negative 14 minus 6x plus 16y equals 4. Here you will notice something particular. The 6x and 6x cancel as expected, but unfortunately the 6y and 6y also cancels, leaving us negative 14 equals negative 4. As you may from learn from an early age, that is not correct. So, based on here, we have something called no solutions. This happens when the equation is never equal. And that is how you solve 522.